The map before you is showing where thousands of bones have been excavated here at the Cleveland Lloyd Dinosaur Quarry between 1960 and 2002. William Lee Stokes wanted researchers and people from all around the world to be able to look at and analyze the Cleveland Lloyd dinosaurs. So he began a program that shipped hundreds of bones all around the world. Paleontologists map where they find bones so that they know specific details, like if certain animals died at the same time, or if certain bones belong to one animal or multiple different ones. When you look at this map, you may notice some large gaps in the mapping. Over the years, scientific focus has shifted from solely excavating pristine specimens for identification and display to also include detailed and thorough data collection. Over the years, the goals of excavating and collecting fossils in the monument have changed. In the earliest years, the goals were more oriented to bring good quality display specimens to museums, and that's certainly important to science outreach. But today, we want as much data as possible. Of course, well-preserved specimens are wonderful, but the bones that were broken before burial, that possibly would have been discarded in the past, or specimens that have been chewed on by a carnivore, or even the smallest microfossil, all serve as very important puzzle pieces. This is why proper data collection is so important. Each fossil tells part of a story that can help us reconstruct the ancient environments at Jurassic National Park. In the past, Many specimens have been discarded along with the scientific data they represent, creating incomplete data records. The researchers working at Jurassic National Monument today are more detail-focused and want to properly record all the information on every specimen found. Proper data collection is really important in, in science because if you start with bad information, you're going to end up with bad conclusions. And at Cleveland Lloyd, this is especially true. As with any long-running endeavor, mistakes have been made. And so when we look at maps, for example, of some of the past excavations, well, some of them say north is over there, some of them say north is over there, and those bones are out of the ground. There's no putting them back. There's no figuring out which map was accurate because the bones have been moved and we can't tell what their original position was anymore. So in order to avoid repeating mistakes like that in the future, we have to be really, really careful about what's going on. Trying to decipher what was lost from historical work versus taphonomic processes is incredibly challenging. Because once a fossil is lost, it's lost for good. And that's why it's so important to respect and protect our paleontological resources for generations to come.